So I'm Gianluca Vastelli from the University of Constance, and uh, thank you to, for the organ to the organizer for the possibility of this uh, talk, for the presentation, for having the possibility to present this work. And as you see here, uh, I will talk about quantum phase transition with dissipative frustration. I will explain now what, what I mean for dissipative frustration. The interesting part is that at the end we have a kind of peculiar critical line in the phase, phase diagram. And uh, yeah, this work has been realized uh, so, uh, with Dominic Mann, the PhD student, and with Wolfgang Berzi and Sabine Andergassen. And uh, why the motivation? Let me introduce a bit uh, uh, shortly uh, the context. And it's a slight difference, no quantum trust or the quantum dot, but it's the physics of mesoscopic many body systems. So why we are interested in this uh, uh, system? You, you can look them as a kind of artificial uh, synthetic quantum matter because you can implement, you can engineer the interaction between different units. Okay, first of all, tips, I'm talking about system like uh, Rydberg atoms, uh, lattice of superconducting qubit and so on. And uh, what, what is nice is nice that you can realize uh, some uh, uh, reference model like a Hubbard model that uh, uh, are theoretically interesting. So they capture the physics, the correlation interaction in solid state physics. But of course, we know that they are just uh, uh, ideal model compared to in a real uh, bulk system. On the other side, they offer the advantage that you can engineer the interaction. So you can tune the parameters in your system. So you are not limited by the some uh, energy scale uh, of fundamental constant. So you can explore phase diagram. And more interesting, at least for the point of view of the theorist, is that you can have additional perspective. In the sense, in this system, since you can prepare some kind of quantum anybody state, you can study other issues like uh, what is the relaxation? What is the non-equilibrium dynamic? For instance, what happens when you drive this system, which is something that you cannot do in the strongly correlated system realized in bulk materials. And finally, and this is the main important uh, feature for the rest of the talk, is that in some sense these are microscopic, uh, they have microscopic sides. So, for instance, if you can imagine a lot of a superconducting qubit, you have to wire your qubit to the rest of the world, even if it's coherent, you can prepare it and manipulate coherent quantum state. And this makes that there is some interaction with the rest of the world, with the environment. So they have effectively open of dissipative system. This is the kind of the cartoon that I represented here. And now what is interesting is that in quantum mechanics, as we know, the dynamics and the thermodynamics, uh, thermodynamical equilibrium are correlated. So you cannot separate them, but even the dissipation affect the thermodynamic uh, equilibrium. And this is indeed, we see that the dissipation can st strongly affect even the phase diagram of the quantum many body system. Okay, now these issues actually are not totally new in the sense that they were discussed more or less 20 years ago in the, again, the physics of the mesoscopic system with the Josephson junction chains. So here I reported a simple, very example. I have superconducting highland here connected by some Josephson coupling. So here we have some coherent tunneling of the Cooper pair quantum tunneling from one island to the other one. And then, so this is the Josephson coupling. And then we have also some charging effects, some charging energy related to the ground capacitance. Now, in the limit in which we neglect the quasi-particle, we assume that the gap is large compared to any other energy scale, you end up with a, a very effective a symbol, uh, low energy model Hamiltonian, which is called the quantum phase model, where we have the first term, which is the electrostatic energy, and the second term, which is the Josephson coupling. And now the, the charge, the local charge on the island, and the phase, the local phase of the condensate, they are conjugate operator. They, they uh, co do not commute. And uh, this, this model, it's interesting because uh, it can sustain a quantum phase transition in the limit of zero temperature. So in the limit in which Josephson energy is large, as you see, as you can imagine here, in order to minimize the, the, the energy, the system prefers to have some ordering phase coherence along the chain. Or on the other side, uh, you, you want to uh, minimize the energy. Uh, so on the other side is when the, this term here, which play the role of kinetic energy, is important. 
And so you, have a, not, you don't have, a, uh, let's say, uncorrelated uh, phase in the, the other limit. This phase here, since you don't have a well-defined difference, it's a little insulating chain. So you cannot sustain a persistent current. Or more easily, this is the language of the phase. In the language of the, ch uh, of the charge, if you want, you have a very strong uh, charging energy. So you have Coulomb blockade, and you are in insulating phase. Now, uh, this is uh, uh, just to give a more uh, broad context. Indeed, uh, you can characterize this quantum phase transition as a BKT transition by using this, uh, uh, in theory, we call the mapping from 1D uh, plus 1 to the classical. In the sense, if you have quantum 1D quantum dimensional system, you can put another axis here corresponding to the imaginary time, beta here, which is the inverse of the temperature. And then you have the mapping in the two-dimensional system of the interacting spin with the ferromagnetic uh, coupling. Now, uh, th that's, as I told you, what happens now when we consider the dissipation in our system? That was discussed uh, in this, uh, uh, again, this other reference model. Uh, so the theory is to introduce a resistance connected to this, uh, uh, to this island, such that you can expect that when there is a voltage difference across this island, there is a current here, so there is some dissipation. And if you recall the uh, uh, Josephson law, so the, uh, the voltage across this is related to the rapidity to the velocity of the phase difference, you have this uh, 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 term here which associated to the current flow into the shunt resistance. So you see here that effectively this resistance here played the role of a damping coefficient, a friction. And then you can scale by looking to this relation in some natural unit in which you introduce the quantum of resistance. Or if you want, you want uh, this decay rate is comparable to AC, which is the energy spacing of the two charging levels. That means that when this broadening is very large, charge states are not defined. And indeed, uh, uh, you have uh, 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 you have a friction of the phase. What happens now when we consider this dissipation? This is a, the, the final result. The quantum phase transition is called dissipative phase transition. You see that at this critical point shift when you introduce some uh, damping in your system. So in other words, here uh, you have the quantum fluctuation because this ratio essentially control, at least in the uh, well, uh, uh, let's say in the limiting well, uh, inside where AJ is much larger, the C control the quantum uh, fluctuation, like a normal solid, the temperature should control the thermal fluctuation. Then you increase this fluctuation, and then you end up in a disordered state, which uh, let me call the liquid state. And now this dissipation, actually what it does, it quench the quantum, the phase fluctuation. So that man means that it favors the, the state, the phase which, uh, with, which some ordering. And this more or less is, roughly speaking, the qualitative scenario that was described in many theoretical papers. But then I found the issue, a, a counterexample. That was the work of Lob Lobos and Jamarki, in which uh, there are many results in this paper. But at least for me, what was interesting was that this critical line change slope. So this critical line change slope, so they consider a chain of, uh, again, of uh, Josephson junction with some capacitive coupling with a metallic uh, uh, film on the, on the uh, here on the, on the on the bottom, and now we can understand this a quenching of the charge fluctuation. As I told you at the beginning, charge are conjugate to the phase, so quenching the phase charge corresponds to an enhancement or increase of the phase fluctuation, such that you now favor the uh, the phase with the, with no ordering. Okay, so that's that was the the, the starting point for uh, this work. Say, so what happens now when we consider both? So we have a channel for the dissipation of the phase and one channel for the dissipation of the charge. And then uh, we realize that it's possible to obtain this situation by simply adding to the original uh, dissipative quantum phase model with the shunt resistance. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Another resistance here, which is between the, the capacitance C and the ground. And then the final result is this peculiar behavior of the critical line that I'm going to explain me in more in detail now. So to explain this uh, behavior, I will start from the quantum prime motion, in which we have a quantum particle here moving a given potential, which is coupled to the bar. And this is uh, in the spirit of the caldera like a model. It's coupled to a bunch of harmonic oscillators here. So this is the part Hamiltonian described the, the particle, and this is the interaction with the bar. And now, this, uh, in many theoretical studies, this kind of interaction is assumed linearly. 
okay? but in the Q operator, the operator of the position of the particle. In the original paper of Leggett, there was some argument to, to, to say that this is, should be the more natural coupling of the particle with the rest of the world, because then you recover, in, if you want, in the very strong limit of the, of the interaction with your particle with the bat, you recover the classical physics. And now, uh, uh, this is a, a nice example if you consider now the harmonic oscillator of the fact that, uh, as I told you at the beginning, the dissipation affects the thermodynamic equilibrium. Indeed, what you can calculate, you, you calculate the zero point fluctuation in your system in presence of the damping friction. And you see here that there is a decreasing, so in some sense proportional to the damping. And just because you decrease the fluctuation, you cannot violate the uncertainty principle, there is an increase of the fluctuation of the momentum. Now, the situation is reversed if, for some reason, we consider another kind of uh, interaction with the but with the momentum. As you can imagine, the oscillator is completely symmetric in the two quadrature. You obtain exactly the same result. You decrease the fluctuation of the momentum, and you increase the fluctuation of the position. That's it's quite simple. and let's say, mathematically uh, uh, evident. But now, what is uh, interesting is, so, okay, from this simple exercise, what, what we can learn, that when we have uh, one single channel of dissipation, this dissipation squeezing the fluctuation of the quadrature associated to the interaction. <laughs> so the interesting question is now, what happens when we have two baths? Uh, one bath is coupled to the position, and one bath is coupled to the momentum. So you have some ohmic friction for these two quadrature. And now the, 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 the answer is not trivial because you cannot quench at, uh, the simultaneously the position and the momentum. So this situation was called in literature, literature dissipative frustration and was analyzed for the, just the simple case of an harmonic oscillator where we have Q and P, momentum and position they do not commute, and the one spin coupled to two bat with the, the, with the Pauli algebra. So now, this is the, the result. If you consider, if you do, this is exactly solvable because the coupling is linear between to the bat. And you recover this behavior, which a priori you not expect for the following reason. So this is the fluctuation of the position. This is the fluctuation uh, sorry, of the momentum. The blue line corresponds when the damping in the momentum is lower than the damping position. So that means that in this case, you expect the damping position dominates. So this behavior you expect, you expect indeed uh, that you increase the fluctuation of momentum and you quench the, 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 the fluctuation of the position. But this is, as you can see, it's not true. So both of the two quad uh, quadrature, they have an increase in, the, in this, uh, uh, by increasing the, 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 the dissipation in your system. And this is the contrary if you consider the opposite situation where you expect the damping of momentum dom dominates of the damping of position. So in other words, you have a situation in which as effect of this fluctuation, the system prefers to increase globally the, uh, the, the fluctuation of the two quadrature. Now, uh, this is not intuitive, and maybe if you want at the end I can give you some qualitative idea, but let's see, let's see what will be the effect of this non-monotomic behavior of the fluctuation. Let's assume that this fluctuation corresponds, let's assume that we can engineer this interaction. We can have this particle interacting to the two environment with uh, position and momentum. And now, this is a fluctuation, for instance, you can imagine it could be the fluctuation of an atom in a crystal in the mean field approach. And now we know that this is the fluctuation increase and then it goes down. Now we know that uh, there is a very simple phenomenological rule to predict the transition from a solid to a liquid, which is called the Lindemann criterion. It says that when this fluctuation is uh, compared to the distance between two atoms uh, approach critical ratio, then the system goes from the solid to the liquid. It undergoes a phase transition. So that means that uh, by, uh, if you believe to the Lindemann criterion, you would expect a solid state here, a liquid state on the other side, and then again a liquid and solid uh, state. So in other words, the effect of the, the consequence of this dissipative frustration would be the uh, event <laughs> behavior in the phase diagram. So this is why we studied this model. Now, to realize this engineered dissipation moment is not clear at the moment how to do in a normal solid, but for sure you, we, we can have, you can have, a, you can realize in the electromo, in a superconducting system. So coming back to the model of Josephson junction chain, so instead of only considering the shunt resistance between these two, one, we consider even the resistance between the island and the, and the ground. Now, as before, you can introduce a dissipative uh, dimensionless coupling to quantify this channel of a uh, uh, charge dissipation. 
And then uh, this is the according uh, to the Caldera and Leather model, the resistance here you can, um, you can describe as a bunch of infinity harmonic oscillator taking the continuous limit, and then this corresponds exactly to the resistance that you have here. <coughs> Once again, okay, this is uh, now uh, uh, to treat this problem uh, because we are interested in the property of our system. One uh, useful the theoretical method is the, the uh, path integral method in which you integrate out the environment and you have to deal with the uh, effective action in the imaginary time. So in this action, it's, there is a Lagrange on your system. Here you recognize the kinetic term and the potential energy, plus the effect of the dissipation. They enter as a two, uh, quadrat quadra two quadratic interaction, but at, at a different time. So this is the interaction between the phase difference at the, uh, the, at the this, uh, between two i and n and n plus one. They interact at two different times, the tighter prime according to the given propagator. This is first one is associated to the let me call conventional of phase dissipation, and the other uh, the other term is associated to the charge dissipation. So generally, this is not possible to solve exactly because you have this nonlinear coupling between the phase. What we have done as a very simplest uh, first method, we use a uh, self-consistent harmonic approximation. This, the, the starting point for this approximation is to the fact that uh, is the volume of inequality, so the exact free energy is always uh, uh, smaller than a trial free energy, in which we replace the uh, nonlinear potential with an effective quadratic potential, and this uh, parameter here is not the same EJ here, not the same energy associated to the potential, but it's a variational parameter. So that means that you want to minimize this expression, which is the free, the free energy respect to the, this quadratic Hamiltonian with the, this potential and the first cumulant. And by, there, uh, by assuming that you want the minima, you have an effective uh, self-consistent interaction with this new parameter, which in other words, correspond to the renormalization of your Josephson energy of system. Where here you have the uh, fluctuation, uh, the average fluctuation in your uh, harmonic uh, chain. So remarkably, this uh, solution, this equation, has, uh, at some point, it breaks down and does not have any more. Sol uh, sorry, this equation does not have any more solution. And this, uh, uh, with this simple theory, you can construct a phase diagram according to the following rule. So you can fix, for instance, the two dissipative curves in the charge and the phase, and then you can switch the, uh, you can change the g parameter, the ratio between the Josephson energy and the charge g energy. For at, at some, for instance, this is an absolute dissipation. You see that the fluctuation goes up. At some point, you uh, you don't have any more solution. You can repeat the same procedure for different ratio, and then you can collect all this point in as a function of g and as a function of alpha, and then you obtain this kind of critical line. When you don't have any more solution, you can associate to the phase without without ordering, and the, this phase corresponds to the uh, phase with ordering, so the uh, the superconducting phase. So. Uh, again, uh, now we have to compare this result with the original idea. If, uh, for instance, if we plot now this fluctuation as a function of, at given ratio g as a function of the dissipation, you see here that you have some kind of line which are cutted. That's because uh, if you, we force the system to be harmonic, so we don't require any self-consistent, this fluctuation goes up and then it goes down. It's, uh, it's, uh, exactly as it uh, behaves in the case of the uh, simple harmonic oscillator. So in our case, what happens here that uh, if you want, at some point, the fluctuations are too strong that you don't find anymore the solution. And this is, again, you have the melting of your, uh, your crystal. So of course, the uh, Lindemann rule, as you can see, is not true, but that was not important. So in some sense, the, the, uh, was a kind of qual the qualitative picture that you expect that at some point you have a huge fluctuation that the system enter in the liquid phase was uh, correct. And then if you want to be more, uh, uh, consistent with your variational approach, you have to notice that uh, this variation of free energy, in, in, indeed, you can have a minimum and some finite value of your variational parameter, the renormalized Josephson energy, but it can also happen that it has a minimum for uh, uh, here when uh, this energy is zero. And then when it happens, a priori, you should consider the solution when uh, uh, this one with the trivial solution, and you say that you don't have any more uh, a, a, a crystal, you don't have any more ordering phase. So this is in, the, in that sense in the spirit of first order transition. When this minimum goes up, then you, uh, you go in the other phase here. So we verify that even by using this addition second criterion, 
So this kind of non-monotonic behavior of the critical line is still there. So in some sense, it's, not, it's still uh, uh, qualitative, uh, qualitative behaves in the same similar system, in the same, same similar manner. And now, uh, of course, at some point, these two lines, they converge because this minimum shifts clo close to the, the zero. And here, definitely, we recover the picture of the second order phase transition. So, but what is in important is that uh, this kind of uh, dissipative frustration leads to this not monotonic uh, critical line. And then, uh, okay, this is again the final uh, result. This is just the comparison when you have a just uh, uh, a normal dissipation in your system. The shunt resistance among the, um, uh, between the, your uh, uh, superconducting island. Okay, then as a last point, we say uh, this is a very interesting fact, but then uh, uh, we want to uh, understand other feature. As I told you at the beginning, the quantum phase transition uh, can be understood via this uh, mathematical mapping in classical system from 1D to, to uh, 1D1 and D plus 1. But in uh, reality, in, in the quantum system, we have additional feature, additional uh, thermodynamic uh, property or, ther or quantum uh, property, which, have, uh, they, they, which does not have any analog, analog in classical system. That was uh, a kind of the modern point of view of the quantum phase transition that started with the, this seminal work which uh, was discussed at how the entanglement, that is a measure of the quantum correlation, correlation in your system, behaves close to a quantum phase transition. For this reason, we also investigated the behavior of the purity of the, and the entanglement uh, in, our, in this uh, uh, quantum, um, quantum uh, phase transition. So this is the result for the purity. I recall you what is, what, uh, with the, what is the purity. The purity is how much your system is close to a really pure quantum state and not a statistical mixture. So in a pure quantum state, the trace of rho square is in one, and it's less than one in the other case. And then this is the, uh, uh, okay, this is an analytic expression for, for the moment, it's not important. But what you observe that a different, by changing the ratio G, a different uh, coupling uh, strength, a fixed ratio between the two dissipative channels, we have a kind of peculiar uh, behavior close to the critical, uh, close to the the transition point here in which this this line has a not monotonic behavior showing the peak and this is uh, it's present only when we consider these two kind of dissipation and the similar result have been obtained for the entanglement so to quantify the quantum correlation in our system we use it as a measurement as a measure of the entanglement the logarithmic negativity which is defined like the uh, uh, negative again value so in some sense you have to look to the negative value of the partial in transport density matrix. You have to partition your system in A and B, and then you do the, the partial transposition. So uh, as you can see here, again, a, a critical behavior appears in the entanglement when you are close to the, uh, to the, to the phase transition. And then again, this appear, uh, it, 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 it appears only when we consider these two uh, dissipation, when we, we consider the situation of the dissipative frustration in our system. Okay, to finalize, so to conclude, we have studied this quantum phase transition in Josephson chain by using some engineered dissipation uh, in, uh, 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 in, 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 uh, by, by dissipation and opportunity resistance applied in your, uh, in your chain. And finally, we also find uh, uh, that uh, the purity and logarithmic negativity show a kind of uh, peculiar behavior close to the uh, critical point. So now, uh, this is the first line, just to give you the outlook, what we are doing. The, of course, uh, this uh, idea of uh, dissipative frustration to, to use the, the um, to couple your quantum body system to the environment in a way that they can compete, you can also translate in other system, as for instance, uh, 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 quantum easy chain. And then uh, what we are doing now is also to study the two level, uh, we, we come back to the uh, single particle problem, but in a more, uh, more interesting situation where you don't have a simple harmonic oscillator, but you have a double well here in order to understand what, what is, as you know, this is a kind of, this corresponds in the low energy physics to the spin boson model, where you, can, you have a quantum phase transition and you want to understand how this dissipative frustration now change the property of the, Quantum phase transition associated to the fact that when you increase, uh, 
when you increase the dissipation, you have the localization of the particle and you kill completely the quantum tunneling in your system. And now we want to start discussing how this uh, dissipative fixation affected this scenario. With this one, I conclude and thank you for your attention. Thank you.